All right, you can go to the next one. Surprise, I don't know. Uh, um, and, and again, it's just, uh, um, this is the same stuff, but yeah. just with a proportional view. So you can see here, fruits and veggies, man. Boom. Big old slice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so how it all breaks down is 80% uh, of the dollar spent on link, uh, with link and double value uh, is on farm fresh, unprocessed foods, things like meat, things like eggs, um, and fresh fruits and vegetables. So most of that stuff, most of the link that was going completely unprocessed uh, food items that are hopefully leading to better health outcomes, which we'll also get to later. You can go ahead and switch it. What is value added? Yeah. So value added um, in the farmer's market world means things like jams, jellies, um, pickled uh, mushrooms, salsa. So value added is actually a pretty um, healthy category. It's just not your, you know, your fresh. Yeah. In fact, for the state of Illinois, Illinois especially block, crop, uh, block uh, grants, uh, we actually lump value added in with the fruits and vegetables because of the fact that uh, we require value added items to come from 75% local sources to be sold. So that, for, for the most part, that's another way of eating your fruits and vegetables. So yeah. And is that the most part? It's not one. Of, there's there's some granola there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but. <laughs> <laughs> and does anyone know what specialty crops refers to in the room? Like what that means when we say specialty crops? Because I didn't until about two years ago. No, this is the one I used to make my brownies with. <laughs> <laughs> you can make my Indeed, specialty crops are fruits and vegetables. They're your strawberries. They're your peppers. They're your um, eggplants. Uh, and so corn, soybean, oats, they're all called by their names. But we call food specialty crops. That's what the government calls food, which I think uh, <laughs> tells a lot about the food policy problems that we're having in this country. So specialty crops are food. I just so I, I just so you know, I'm starting to transition away from specialty crops and just oh, okay. call yeah, it yeah, call food. food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Oh, my plate. This is yeah. this is funny. Yeah, sure. You have okay, cool. Uh, uh, and we should have like a little caveat about this. But for instance, we just made a really I hate I hate pie charts, but we made one for this uh, because ChooseMyPlate.gov USDA has it. This is the new food pyramid. You guys familiar with Choose My Plate? Y'all love choose my plate? Hey. Okay, fruits, vegetables, have. Oh, wait a minute. What did we do at the farmer's market? Fruits, vegetables, have. That's weird. Uh, we would love to see we would love to see any private grocer that is offering food stamps step up and like offer some food category information. We would love to see that. We would love to see comparable stuff and see what types of food environments are actually the better ones. We have a feeling that open air farmers markets with it heavy mix of fresh produce blends are, are where that's going to happen. Um, but we should say also that this is percentages of dollars spent, so we need to think carefully about this before we kind of lump this, right? Because this is a plate of food and this is a plate of money. And not every single calorie costs the same amount of right. money, right? And not, ev not every single mineral content or vitamin content costs the same amount of money. But this is just to generally kind of give a sense of this is what we're delivering by building this specific type of food environment. And this is not something that happens overnight. This has been going on since 2008, building from like really, really small starts as you guys saw. Uh, I think we need to keep on going. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> along the whole thing about food stamp stigma, uh, in terms of people who are not on food stamps, who actually is following the USDA My Plate recommendation? About 2%. <laughs> about 2% of any given American meal actually follows the My Plate guidelines, OK? So if we're saying that we're going to hold this low income standard up to this certain kind of thing, or say that like hey, we, we need to have them feel bad about not like about buying too much junk food or whatever, like let's examine our own house first. And um, then just a quick caveat. So there's there's one old white guy in a suit that I actually have some respect for that works in Washington D.C. Um, and his name is Kevin Concannon. He's the undersecretary of the USDA, which is the agency charged with um, SNAP food stamps um, and all that good stuff. And so he has to field a ton of questions about. Um, you know, we should we should restrict what people can you know buy food stamps with, and we should do this, and we should do that, and we should basically just control poor people's lives. Um, and so he always brings a stat up um, to show that just two percent of the time Americans in general are following this. So why don't we have a more holistic picture and not just focus on those that are using food assistance um, and SNAP? So uh, Kevin Concannon, he's also a Cubs fan. He's an Iowa boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we can go to the next. Yeah. One. 